This week on Maker Update, an Octo Bouncer, What's Up with Maker Fair Bay Area, a Lego Robot Rickshaw, Duresta's Bandsaw Bot, a 3D printed Snorkel, Nibblers, and Nunchucks. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. It's good to be back. I'm happy to be back, although I did get in some good quality time working on my Cocktail Robots keypad ordering interface last week, which might be the nerdiest thing I've ever said, but uh, it's also the best thing I've ever said. You can also find a Facebook page now for my build progress on the Cocktail Robot. If you have any interest in that at all, you can find a link to that down in the show notes. But now, let's get started with the project of the week. Tobias Kuhn has been on a five-year mission of building machines that can reliably juggle a ping pong ball. His latest and perhaps final build of these ball bouncing robots is called the Octo Bouncer. It's mesmerizing to watch this thing, but you're probably not gonna build one for yourself. It's a unique obsession, but that shouldn't stop you from appreciating the lengths that Tobias went to in creating this design. You can boil the robot down to four stepper motors and drivers and a single Teensy 4.0 microcontroller running Arduino code. The Teensy was chosen for its maximum clock speed of 600 megahertz compared to a more common 16 megahertz Arduino speed. This is what allows it to read and react to the ball so quickly. A 120 frame per second camera feed of the ball is taken from under the platform, which is then processed by OpenCV and a custom application he created in Unity. This gives him the position and velocity of the ball and allows him to create a real-time simulation of the machine. And on top of all of that, he machined over 150 aluminum parts for the robot using a small $500 Benbox CNC mill that he bought off Amazon. It took him around 160 hours just to make all of the parts. The poor guy had to make a soundproof enclosure for it just to not go crazy from the constant grinding sound. But the end result looks beautiful, and again, you have to appreciate that he got to this after five years and multiple variations on this idea. If you do want to make one for yourself, you can find a link in the show notes to his project page. I've also included a similar project by Johan Link that uses servos and three arms. Now for some news on MakeZine, Dale Doherty shares an official announcement that Maker Fair Bay Area will not be held this year, at least not at its usual time in May. There's a mention of a possibility that it could be held sometime, somewhere in the fall, but it's all sort of up in the air. It would seem that there's a good chance that it's just not happening, but given the wave of events that have been canceled this year due to fears of coronavirus, at least it's in good company. But while Maker Fair Bay Area is the longest running fair, it's not the only one. At MakerFair.com you can browse hundreds of global fairs and find one that may be happening near you. Back to more projects, check out this wonderful Maker mashup. It's a Lego Automaton by JK Brickworks showing Adam Savage being pulled in his robot rickshaw. If you haven't seen the video, about a month ago Adam Savage built a rickshaw cart that could be pulled by the spot robot he has on loan from Boston Dynamics. It's a great video and Jason Aleman from JK Brickworks was so inspired by it that he created this motorized Lego tribute. The Lego design uses a single motor to create the motion of both the wheels and the robot legs. Jason was nice enough to narrate the video and really break down how everything fits together and works. It's fun to watch and offers some great insights on how to gear little kinetic sculptures like this. Another video project that's pure fun is this bandsaw bot by Jimmy DeResta. In one 10 minute take, you get to see Jimmy sculpt the Rock'em Sock'em style robot from just a few blocks of wood using a bandsaw and CA glue. It's like a step up from whittling and a step down from those guys who carve tikis with chainsaws. For a bit of practical making, on Instructables, Robert Werner, aka Rabbit Creek, has a guide on making your own valve snorkel using parts that are 3D printed. This is obviously a project that you undertake at your own risk, but Robert has put a lot of research into it and has several other projects on Instructables that point to his interest in diver safety and oxygen and CO2 measurement in snorkeling. In his valve snorkel design, the air you exhale leaves to one side and doesn't get remixed with the fresh air that you're breathing in. I think it's a cool idea, and if you ever wanted to roll your own snorkel and look like a badass, this is one way to do it. Now for a few tools and tips. Raspberry Pi now has its own official SD card imaging utility. It's free and available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, and you can find it on their downloads page. It's meant to simplify the process of downloading a Raspberry Pi OS and imaging it to a card because it's all handled in one application. You open up the app, choose your OS, download it through the app, 
locate your card, and then write the image to your card. It's kind of a small thing, but I think it's a good idea. On the Cool Tools blog, Sean Michael Reagan has a video up showing how to use a manual nibbling tool for cutting shapes out of metal. It's an inexpensive tool that you can get for under $20 that allows you to carefully chew out custom shapes in a variety of metals. For mounting components in metal enclosures or on metal panels, it's very handy. Check out the video. Adam Savage has a new favorite tool video out that goes over a few different types of jewelry clamps. When you need to get a tight grip on something small or round like a ring, these look like a great option. On the Tindy blog, I learned about this $7 breakout board sold by Brian Lowe that can turn a Wii Nunchuck remote into a wireless Arduino compatible controller. You do have to plug in your own Wemos D1 Mini ESP8266 board, which are only a few dollars. For the right project, I think it's a great hack. SparkFun has launched their own updated spin on the Arduino Uno called the Spark X Blackboard C. There's a lot of Uno clones on the market, but this one looks really good and only costs around $15. You get a reversible USB-C connection, a quick connector, little through holes next to the headers for making more permanent connections, and a tiny switch that allows you to change the logic voltage between 5 volts or 3.3 volts depending on what your project needs. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video on working with gesture recognition. They go over some basic concepts, but also show off a capacitive near field sensor evaluation kit by Microchip that can interpret hand movement and touches into different actions. Check it out. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list if you want to get show notes emailed out to you each week. You never miss a show. You get all the links with all the pictures and the whole deal. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.